Game Arms Sports Cage is brought to you by Country Grocer. You'll feel like family. Welcome back to Game On, Jeff and Paul. Uh, welcoming a couple special guests. First of all, if you're at home, do not adjust your shits. We are this small. We are this tiny. We are welcoming Mo Elwanibi and Roger Wade to the set. Uh, guys, thanks for coming in. And Mo, we'll start with you. A lot of people don't know that uh, when you were done football, you retired here on the island. And what are you up to these days? I work for the John Howard Society. Right. I work out of uh, uh, the Nanaimo Correctional Center. And uh, part of my job is to help facilitate uh, inmates re reintegration back into the in the community. I also run a uh, recovery house that's attached to the treatment center in the jail. So I've um, been doing that for almost two years and I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Roger uh, Wade, uh, no longer of the Victoria Rebels, West Shore Rebels. Tell us about the uh, the name change a couple weeks ago. Uh, well, we're pretty excited about the name change. We, uh, we needed to uh, locate out to the West Shore a couple years ago and, and uh, the business community and the, and the community itself uh, has fully supported us and we felt that it was ri the right thing to do to change it to the West Shore Rebels. I thought that I would let you toot Moe's <laughs> horn as far as uh, how great a football player he was and, and just maybe some of uh, you know how we started here in junior and, and some of his accomplishments. Actually my first memory of Moe, Moe's a year younger than me and he played uh, midget my first year junior and we played for the Vampire Organization right. and uh, Moe they couldn't find a helmet big enough to fit him. <laughs> and uh, that was my first memory of Mo. Uh, my, the most amazing thing I always said about Mo is uh, how fast. I've never seen a big man in my life, and I'm pretty big. I've never seen anybody move as fast as Mo. Mo, what do you remember about those days? Because, I mean, you went on to go play in the NFL, the CFL, but uh, looking back on your start, I mean, you went to Vic High, correct? Yeah. A, yeah, and so what, what do you remember about playing you know what? football I, in those days? I, it was funny. I was talking to my wife about it last night, and... Uh, those were playing for the for the vampires and, and with the, with Roger and the Palas was sort of my first couple of years of playing football. I, I was 16, hadn't played it like a lot of guys, and I remember uh, it was like playing with men. I felt like a boy playing with men. You know, some of these guys were drinking, and, and then back then, <laughs> oh, health, who was that? Yeah. Who was that? I wonder. <laughs> you know, health and fitness wasn't uh, a big thing. We, you know, we had some older guys that were smoking, and I just remember being in awe. Really? I remember being in awe of some of these guys. It was a lot of fun. It was, and it was the first time I really started to feel that 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 camaraderie of, of a team sport. You know, the, the guys that we played with were a lot of fun. And tell us about uh, Brigham Young and and the experience there and uh, you were the uh, top lineman and in all of uh, in all of the states I mean how, how amazing well just tell me about the whole you know the whole experience you know to go from playing in front of like a hundred people to I remember my first game at Brigham Young University and you come out on like a crisp you know Saturday afternoon and 80,000 people I are bet. screaming mm, in wow. blue I remember you know I still to this day I get chills I and I it it took me about 10 minutes to realize I was crying. Really? As I was running out there. Because, wow. I mean, you run down the tunnel yeah. and burst through the, you know, it was just such an emotional thing that I didn't realize I was crying until like 10 minutes into You're the game. Isn't that and, uh, you know, and they announce your name, and, and it, it's phenomenal. And then to win the Outland Trophy, my mom. I, my mom lived in Camus at the time, and I couldn't talk to her for three days because there were so many phone calls. Really? You know, she said she had to unplug the phone, oh and, and that was kind of surreal. Kids in Victoria don't think of making the NFL and don't think about making it to the next level. Has that changed over the years? Well, I think that there's there's NFL possibilities. I, I think that, uh, you know, with, with the game the way it is today, um, the the kids coming up today, they're better athletes. Yeah. When, when we played, we didn't talk about going to the right. CFL or... Or, or the NFL, but uh, I think now with uh, you know with the, with the Rebels, the way we've gone on, we've we've created some uh, pretty good players. Or yep. how, how maybe we didn't create them, but we <laughs> helped them along the way. And, and many you know, are alumni in the CFL right now, which, yeah. is, which yeah. is pretty cool. And let's talk about the, your NFL days because you know you you were on the practice roster, and then you, you finally got your shot. There was an injury in Washington, and you finally get your your big shot. Tell me tell me about. You know how that felt. I mean, that must have been like, wow, here I go. 
Jim Lachey, who's an all-pro left tackle, mm -hmm. I, was, I was his backup for a year before he got hurt, and then I got a chance to start. So I, I, it's funny for me, my first five NFL starts were uh, Lawrence Taylor, Charles Haley, Reggie White, <laughs> uh, Chris Dolman, and Lawrence <laughs> Taylor. You're kidding. Right. You're kidding. So that, that was my first five NFL starts. So <laughs> Who was the first one again? It was Lawrence Taylor. Oh, You're wow. kidding. Right. So those were my, wow. those were my, you know, and those were, and so, you know, I was, I was this kid out of, in the second year out of Brigham Young University, yeah. mm -hmm. and I remember calling some some friends in college and when you're a starter in the NFL you get your own suite and I remember oh <laughs> yeah and I remember being um, in New York uh, um, the night before the game in my own suite I'm talking to I'm talking to my buddies back in college and I'm like there's a couch in the <laughs> hotel room <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and uh, and just you know the the enormity of the situation. Yeah. I think my ignorance of it was it really helped me. But uh, there were some great guys and and great you know great franchise to be part of. Roger, tell me you know what it was like then. So now you've got this friend that you played junior football with, and and you know your former teammates. Now you're out of the game and you're looking at his accomplishments. What was it like as a Victoria guy sitting back here watching well, watching him on uh, Sunday afternoon playing in the NFL? It was it was really cool. It would have been way better if he would have been playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. <laughs> because, because I think my least favorite team is Dallas and uh, Washington. But, you know, it was when he, when, when he won the Super Bowl, um, I remember watching that, and, and uh, it, was, it was pretty cool to, to, to have somebody that, uh, that, that you played with, you know, um, local kid. Uh, to make it to that level. Uh, Tell us about yeah. winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, that's the pinnacle um, of what you did. You did. You know, everybody else, all my friends had gone to, and afterwards went to Super Bowls in San Diego and Florida, and you know, they're judging bikini contests. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get to the, go to the only one that's in Minnesota. <laughs> 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 I There's remember. Yeah, ice fishing contests. <laughs> well, yeah. But it was uh, it was seven days of, of a lot of a lot of fun. Big night coming up for Mo. Well, first of all, for your football organization uh, period, April 9th, you're having a few uh, BC lines over, including Wally Buono and G. Roy Simon. And that night, you'll be retiring Mo's jersey, the first jersey in your franchise history uh, history to be retired. Uh, why Mo, and uh, why now? Uh, well, this is our 40th year. Um, we've we've never done it before, and uh, we were sitting around oh, about three or four months ago, and we were just talking, uh, just a group of us. We were, it wasn't even a meeting; it was just over a couple of beer, and yeah. and uh, I said, you know, we got to do something special for our fortieth year, yeah. and uh, to have an event, and and we're trying to raise money for our scholarship program. Right. We've got in, involved with the Victoria Foundation. Um, I said, you know, I think we need to retire a jersey, and we've never done it, and. I think we should retire Moe's. It was kind of just a given. I mean, there's nobody else in the history of this franchise uh, that uh, deserves it more than Moe's. So. And Moe, you've won countless awards, but it must be quite the honor to be uh, to have the number retired. This is a huge run. You know, this is a huge run. Um, you know, I started here. Um, I just, I, I remember riding my bike when I was 16, you know, with my football gear, <laughs> riding to my first ever practice, wow. wondering how, what was gonna happen, what it's gonna be like, and you know, who I'm gonna, you know, these guys are, some of them are 22, older, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, some of them are 21, 22, and being scared, and, and I was thinking about that, dude. I remember that kid, and, and uh, you know, this has come full circle for me, and it's, it's, it's a huge honor, I'm what, really. What do you offer to, to the younger kids? I mean, when, uh, I'm sure you'll be speaking to some of them, but what do you say to the kids who do have, you know, the NFL, CFL sights in their eyes? Sometimes when you're young, you don't know what your dream is, and you have to sort of latch on to somebody else, and, and they kind of walk you through those moments, and, and in just that, you know, it's attainable that nothing is, nothing is out of reach. And uh, it starts with that small step, and it starts with just trying. Very well said. Roger, just walk us through uh, the dates, times, how people can get tickets and uh, come out and, and help us pay tribute to Mo. Um, the date is April 9th, Saturday night. It's at the Four Point Sheraton, downtown Langford. Yep. Uh, tickets, you can go on our website, uh, or you can call me. We got all that information on the phone. We've got like a minute and a half left here. I, I just wanted to ask you one other question that's uh, been on my mind for a few days. <laughs> what is the worst pronunciation of your last name that oh. you ever heard <laughs> over a public address? You almost screwed it up. Oh. I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> almost. 
<laughs> well, I, I, uh, I told you I played in a junior college in Utah. We went to play a game against Dixie College in Idaho. And I remember coming out on the field, and the guy said, Mo kill a honky. <laughs> Intimidating, though. I'd change my name to that. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's oh, you funny. know what? We've got to end on that. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Mo, thanks very much. Thank Congratulations. Yeah. We'll Mo, see you on you uh, April the 9th. Thank Roger, you. thanks Pleasure. very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming Roger. in, guys. And yeah, uh, we'll get the uh, number and everything on the screen right now. And uh, get out there and support the uh, West Shore Rebels. And uh, guys, thanks again. And that's another edition of Game On here on Check. Every Monday night, 7 and 10.30, right here in the Big Six, it is Game On. Game On.